Guys, let's be honest. In 2023, the Fox body is freaking old. And there's a lot of little things that go wrong with these cars that uh, maybe you can't explain the noise or the rattle or the squeak. Or maybe you're just trying to make your Fox body better all. Um, but we're going to cover that today in this video. Just some of the smaller things um, that you can fix. Nothing crazy, um, but will definitely improve your driving experience and get your Fox back up to a standard where you enjoy driving it again. Let's go. All right, so number one is your striker bushing. And the striker bushing essentially is what your door latch grabs onto when you close it. So if you get a weird noise, like a, a kind of a metal on metal noise uh, when you're driving the car, this is what's happening. That's the noise you're getting. Why are you getting that noise? Your striker bushing. So your striker bushing right here, again, is what your latch grabs onto when you shut the door. What's missing here is a little plastic shield or bushing or whatever you want to call it um, around this so you don't get that metal noise. They're extremely cheap. They're extremely easy to replace and they will eliminate all that noise you're getting from the metal on metal contact. Pick you up a set, go ahead and replace it. Your door will also shut better and it'll reduce wind noise. It'll reduce rattles, all kinds of stuff. Replace your striker bushing. All right, next common Fox body issue, door lock actuators. So your door lock actuator is right there. All right, so you can see your door lock actuator right here and you've got one per door. And essentially when you push the button, that little rod that curves into the latch adjustment, latch assembly there, um, moves it up and down. Well, what happens is they freeze up over time, wear out, just get generally crappy, and then you got no door locks. So your actuator is actually only mounted to the vehicle with this one rivet. That's it. Um, you've got a harness inside the door that you have to unplug and uh, just drill this rivet out. They can be kind of a pain in the ass to get back in just because you're reaching inside the door, uh, but not difficult to install. You'll get several different little rod ends as they're a fairly universal item. Just grab the one that came with the kit that matches best what came off of the car and you should be good to go. All right, next common issue that will drive you absolutely insane by giving you horrible metal on metal noises in your front end is your sway bar bushings and your sway bar in links. Now your front sway bar has got two different mounting points. You've got one at the body and you see you've got this bushing right here. That bushing will go out over time just deteriorating and what will happen is the sway bar moves around in here. It'll hit the, the metal bracket down here and the metal bracket down here and sound like your front end is totally coming out from under the car. Sounds awful, especially over bumps. Um, very easy to replace, very cheap. I would probably go ahead and get you a set of urethane ones and uh, call it a day, but that's your first bushing for your sway bar. The next mounting point is your sway bar end length. And as you can see, these have multiple bushings. You've got two at the top and then two down at the A-arm. And as you can see, this one's already about gone. And again, you'll get that metal on metal moving around as the suspension articulates. The sway bar will hit this metal bushing up here, this metal bushing down here, and cause all kind of problems. Replace your end links. I would, again, go ahead and get you a set of urethanes. Uh, it'll tighten them up. They're fairly inexpensive, not hard at all to replace, and will get rid of that horrible, nasty noise in your front end, and you'll probably handle a little bit better if you grab the urethane bushings. All right, your next common problem, boys, the much dreaded heater core. Now, you can see this car's got the dash out, obviously. Um, your heater core is located right in here. You got four bolts on top here. And those are a very common problem. Now, 
I've got a video right here we did on the channel um, back several years ago that gives you a step-by-step, -step, the easiest way to replace the heater core. We'll save you a ton of time. I'll drop a card up above there if you want to do, uh, if you want to go check that out. It's definitely worth a watch. Um, but your heater core, guys, is something that um, is very common on Fox bodies. Quickest way to tell if yours is bad, you'll start fogging up the windshield. You'll have water in the floorboard. But uh, your heater core comes out right here and hooks to your heater hoses that come off the engine and uh just one of those things they're gonna leak over time you also won't have any heat uh which will definitely suck but check out the video so the next common issue with fox bodies is going to be your ignition switch and most everybody if not every fox body owner ever has had to replace these these things will cause you all kinds of strange electrical issues uh, no start conditions basically everything you don't want but let's get into that so this is your ignition switch you can see we've got this one off already but essentially what it does when you turn the key the little rod moves this around and basically tells your car to start but what will happen is the plastic part will separate from this metal part and basically give you all kinds of issues um, these are fairly inexpensive to do. I would buy the highest quality one you can find um, because they are so problematic. But as far as location, they mount right here on the column behind where the uh, key cylinder is. Not hard to replace. Basically, you're just gonna pull off your, your uh, column trim and uh, then you've got two tamper-proof torque screws that hold it to the column. Very common thing. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a spare one tucked away in your console if you do your lot of driving in your car i would definitely have a spare one all right the next common issue is for you five speed guys and that has to do with your clutch actuation now from the factory you have a setup like this which basically has a plastic uh, quadrant and then a little pole right here and the the factory clutch cable is adjustable and the way you would do that as you would put your foot behind the clutch pedal and pull up about as far as you can, don't go crazy, and then push it back down. And that will take the slack, as you can see these teeth, you pulling it backwards will pull the paw gear up farther on the quadrant and pull the slack out as your cable's going to adjust over time. But the problem with this setup, especially because these cars are so old, is these teeth will strip out. Uh, the quadrant will crack um, all kinds of issues you know you, your spring on here will pop out all kinds of problems the fastest way and i don't not sure how many people are actually still running this original setup is just replace it with an aluminum quadrant that does away with this and then add a firewall adjuster and an adjustable cable that way you can basically manually adjust your clutch as needed because it will stretch over time again not sure how many people have these left because they fail so often but that's definitely a wear item something i would replace next issue has to do with your cooling system now if you've been chasing cooling systems and can't lock it down there's a good possibility your factory clutch fan is at fault now your fan has two different parts to it You've got your clutch, which is right here, and then you've got the fan assembly itself. There's two things that can go wrong here. Your clutch itself, which is kind of a, a spring-loaded type deal that adds tension, uh, that can weaken over time, and then the fan will not cool as well as it should. And the second part is the blade itself. As you can see, the blade is, pla is plastic, and you can see this one, has cracks all over the place now they these can get as bad as to actually come apart and when that happens not only are you inside of the road because the car is going to run hot but you can also send plastic into the radiator causing holes definitely not a good thing here's another big thing you need to think about as it relates to your fan 
Here's another problem you may not have thought about. Because your fan is directly bolted to the engine via the water pump pulley, if your motor mounts are old, broken down, and sagging, which means the engine is gonna drop in the K-member, what'll happen is your fan blade will start getting into the bottom of your shroud. So every time it turns around, it's gonna rub that shroud and really jack your fan up. So if you're wondering why the ends of your fans look like they've been uh, drugged through the gravel or, or wearing, that's why you probably have motor mounts that need to be replaced. So replacing the fan is not gonna help you. Do your motor mounts first, then put your fan and new clutch assembly on. All right, boys, next common problem. We're going back to doors. Worn out hinges. If you can lift up, you got slack in your door you definitely need to replace those let me show you how guys let's be honest our door is taking absolute beating opening closing people leaning on them grabbing them to shut grabbing them to open so yeah they're gonna wear out over time but fixing them is not that bad let's check it out so as far as fixing your door hinges and getting rid of that sag just grab you one of these pin kits right here you can see this one's already been replaced this is all you're replacing right here. Now you're, you are gonna wanna have a buddy to help you because um, you don't wanna scratch the door, drop the door, anything like that. But essentially just get the old pins out from the factory, install these new ones, your little retaining clips. And no more saggy door, which will eliminate hard closing problems, wind noise, all kinds of problems all right guys i hope that helps just trying to go over some of the smaller things you're going to run into i know there's a lot of new people in the fox body game and um look if you haven't been around them a long time you don't know so um hope that helps guys um all of my og fox guys drop some comments below what are some other common things that you can pretty much expect in your fox body ownership and i uh, appreciate all of you guys watching if you enjoyed this please give me a big thumbs up make sure you smash that subscribe button we'll catch you on the next one